Krishna Shavakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vancha Kaupata Rubyastya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevata Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnabe Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasate Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare Can you share the screen with me? Okay, I did. Today is Krishna book, right, Gunash? Yes. Already, Gunash. Thank you. All right. So we're reading Krishna book, and we're on uh, we're on chapter number uh, fifty-one, and we're hearing about Mochi Kunda. The deliverance of Muchi Kunda. So Muchi Kunda had been sleeping in the cave and he woke up and when he woke up fire came out from his eyes and he burned Kali Yavna to ashes. So Kalayavna, he was a demon, he come he was attacking Mathura and so Lord Krishna arranged that Muchi Kunda would kill him. Lord Krishna didn't kill him, he arranged Muchi Kunda to kill him. So then Muchi Kunda, he saw Lord Krishna there in the cave. And so he was puzzled, who is this, who is Lord Krishna? He saw he was very, very handsome, very good looking and Muchi Kunda inquired First of all, Muchi Kunda told who he introduced himself, and then he wanted to know who Lord Krishna was. So Muchi Kunda wanted to offer a prayers to Lord Krishna and he's telling Lord Krishna his prayers, he's off describing the nature of the material world. So we're going through the prayers. Uh, so Muchi Kunda says to Lord Krishna, he says, uh, my dear Lord, we come under the full control of this inevitable time. Yeah, we're, we're all controlled by time. We're controlled during a life and we're controlled at death also. So Mochi Kunda explains, he says, one may be a powerful king, you may be a very powerful king, but when I come home, after fighting battles, I come home and I may conquer the world, but when I come home, I... I have to accept many material conditions. So, 
เวลาค่าค่าไปที่ทํางานค่าจะมีอํานาจอะไรมากมายแต่ขณะแต่เมื่อคันใดที่ค่าต้องกลับไปบ้านเนี่ยค่าก็จะเป็นผู้ที่ไม่มีอํานาจอะไรมากเลยมุชิมุชิคุณจะ say I may go to battle and I win the battle and everybody bows down to me ท่านก็ให้ตัวอย่างบอกว่าเหมือนกับตอนที่ข้าเนี่ยไปสงครามไปรบในสงครามเนี่ยพอข้ารบได้รับชัยชนะมาทุกคนก็จะก้มลงกราบข้าถวายความเคารพต่อข้ามุชิคุณจะ fighting kings And, but these kings, when they get defeated by Muchi Kunda, then they bow to Muchi Kunda and they offer their respects to him. But Muchi Kunda says, "When I come home, when I come back to my home, and then I may be with my wife, and and I'll be in, we'll be in our private room." Together, he said, "I will bow to her." แล้วก็มุชิกุนดาบอกว่าแต่ว่าตอนที่ข้าเนี่ยเวลาข้าไปสงครามทุกคนจะเคารพข้าแบบนั้นแต่ว่าเวลาข้าไปอยู่กับภรรยาของข้าสองต่อสองในห้องเนี่ยกลายเป็นว่าข้าเนี่ยจะก้มลงกราบเขาแทน Of course, this m u c h i k u n d a s describing says, "When I want sense gratification, I have to bow to the feet of my." Of all the all the women that I want to enjoy, I have to beg them for sense gratification. แต่ณที่นี้ความหมายของมุชกุนดาที่พูดถึงอยู่ก็คือพูดถึงการเมื่อตนเองต้องการที่จะสนองประสาทสัมผัสเวลาเมื่อตัวเองต้องการที่จะสนองประสาทสัมผัสเนี่ยข้าก็ต้องยอมก้มลงกราบให้กับหญิงสาวที่ข้ารู้สึกที่จะอยากสนองประสาทสัมผัสด้วย So. The material way of life is so complicated. Hmm. Before, before enjoying the material life, you have to work so hard to get any enjoyment. You hardly get an opportunity to enjoy anything. You want to get material facilities. You have to do a lot of austerity and penances. Maybe you can get elevated to higher planets. Maybe you can go to heaven. Maybe you get the opportunity to take your next birth in a very rich family or even a king's family. Everybody's think, people often think about the next life, and they want to, they do a lot of austerities to prepare for the next life. They will give they will do different sacrifices, and they will give charity. For the benefit for the next life. t h e y will do t h e f e r e n t s a c r i f i c e and they will give charity for the benefit for the next life. So even if you're a king, you live in anxiety. Even if you're a king, you live in anxiety. Even if you're a king, you live in anxiety. Even if you're a king, you live in anxiety. Even if you're a king, you live in anxiety. Even if you're a king, you live in anxiety. Even if you're a king, you live in anxiety. Even if you're a king, you live in anxiety. Other kings trying to conquer him, or some politics. Somebody trying to, they don't like the king's government. กษัตริย์เนี่ยก็ต้องมีความคิดพิจารณาเกี่ยวกับเรื่องการบริหารการปกครองบ้านเมืองหรือว่าอยู่กับการเมืองอยู่ดีเพราะว่าเขาจะต้องคอยดูว่ามันจะมีใครที่เก่งขึ้นมาไหมประชาชนจะชอบการบริหารประเภทนี้ไหม
And the king also worries about his next life if he can go to a higher planet. So Muji Kundas is very difficult to get out of material life. But said if if somehow we get the mercy, the mercy of the Lord Krishna, if we can get Muji Kunda speaking to Krishna. So he said, if somehow we can get your mercy, then that can get us out of the material entangle, out of the material world. Of course, Muchi Kunda says we need to get the opportunity to associate with a pure devotee. Association with the pure devotee is the mercy of Krishna. So this is the beginning of liberation. And you get contact with a pure devotee. Only by the association of pure devotees can we approach the Supreme Lord Krishna. And we know Lord Krishna is the controller of both the material and the spiritual world. And Muchi Kunda tells Krishna, you are the goal, you're the highest goal of all pure devotees. By associating with pure devotees, then we can develop love for Krishna. So develop, we want to become Krishna conscious, we need the association of pure devotees. And by association with pure devotees, we'll get liberated from the material world. Oh. So Muchi Kunda says, you are, you are so merciful that it, although I'm, I'm reluctant to associate with your pure devotees, but you are very merciful to me. And Muchi Kunda said, I, I, he said, I had a little contact with a pure devotee, Garga Muni. And so because of, I, because I had a little contact with him, so I got your mercy. And by the by by your mercy, I lost all my attachments to the material world. I lost my family, I lost my kingdom, I lost all my opulence. And 
สูญเสียสิ่งที่จะทำให้ข้าเนี่ยพัฒนาการในโลกนี้ทั้งหมด I could not get rid of these things without your mercy ข้าจะไม่สามารถเป็นอิสระจากสิ่งเหล่านี้ได้ถ้าปราศจากพระเมตตาของพระองค์ Sometimes we see big, big kings or rulers. They sometimes they give up everything and they become renounced. They give up all their opulence and they go to live in the forest. But Muchikunda said, "I don't have to give up anything because I don't have anything now. By your mercy, you took everything from me." So all I want now is service to your lotus feet. And Muchi Kunda says to Krishna, "You are the supreme personality of Godhead, and you can offer me anything I want, including liberation." But Muji Kunta said, "I I should not be stupid and ask you to give me something which would get me entangled in the material world." Muji Kunta said, "Any any sane person, any normal person, they will not want to ask anything material from you." So I just want to surrender to your lotus feet. You are, you are the supreme Lord, and you are the supreme. You are the Brahman, and personal Brahman, and you are the super soul. And you are, Mochikunda said, you are this material world because this material world is all your energy. So you are the real shelter for everyone. If it doesn't matter if we're on the material platform or on the spiritual platform, everyone should take shelter at your lotus feet. So I take shelter at your lotus feet. For for many lifetimes, Muji Kunda said, for many births, I have been suffering in the material world. Now I am tired of it. I've always been controlled by my senses, and I was never satisfied. So I take shelter of your lotus feet. Because your lotus feet can help me to get rid of all my suffering and contamination. So because Krishna is the super soul in everyone's heart, he knows 
everything. He can understand everything about everyone. So he said, now, now I am free of all contamination of material desire. So I don't want to enjoy the material world. I don't want to merge into your impersonal effulgence. And I don't want to just meditate on your on your paramatma, on you as a paramatma. I just want to take shelter of you, and I I know I'll be peaceful and undisturbed. So Lord Krishna was very pleased with the words of Muchikunda. And Lord Krishna tells him, he said, you have been the king of all the all the lands on this planet. But now I see you, you're free of all material contamination. Now you are ready to do devotional service. So I'm very pleased that although I gave you the opportunity to ask something, you didn't want anything. So Krishna said, I, now I see that your mind is fixed on me. And you're not worried about any material problem, any material quality. Right. There are three material qualities, goodness, passion, and ignorance. So when one is placed into the material qualities, passion and ignorance, then there's, there will be all kinds of greed and lust. And because of greed and lust, we try to find, we try to be comfortable in the material world. And when we're in the, if we're in the mode of goodness, then we just try to purify ourselves by doing penances and austerities. But when one comes to the platform of a brahmana, then he may want to merge into the existence, he may want impersonal liberation. 
บราหมณ์ที่แท้จริงแล้วนะเขาอาจจะมีความต้องการที่จะกลืนเข้าไปในความเป็นอยู่ขององค์พระขวาง But when one only wants to do devotional service unto the lotus feet of the Lord, then he is transcendental to all the material energy. แต่เมื่อบุคคลมีความพยายามที่จะทำการรับใช้ต่อพระบาทรูปดอกบัวขององค์พระขวานเท่านั้นเนี่ยนั่นแปลว่าเขาผู้นั้นเนี่ยมีคุณสมบัติที่เหนือทั้งสามระดับทางโลกวัตถุนี้ The one who is actually a, a pure devotee. Then he, he doesn't have any material qualities. He has all all his qualities are pure and spiritual. So Lord Krishna continues speaking to Muchi Kunda, and he tells him, he said. I offer to give you any kind of benediction. Krishna said, "I wanted to test you to see how advanced you are in devotional service." Huh? What? No, I'm giving class. Sorry, somebody disturbing me out there. Okay, so Krishna said, "I wanted to test you, but now I can see you're you're a." You're a pure devotee, and you're not attracted to anything material. You don't have any greedy or lusty desires to enjoy the material world. So some yogis say they want to elevate themselves to higher planets by controlling the senses. And they they will meditate upon me, and they will control their breath. They will do pranayama. But these people are not freed of material desires. We see that these yogis can easily fall down again to the material platform. And there's a, a a very clear example of this. There was a great yogi called Vishwamitra Muni. So Vishwamitra Muni was a big yogi. He was doing pranayama. He was controlling his breath. But there was this beautiful woman came from the heavenly planets, and she was her name was Menaka, and she came to see Vishwamitra. So Vishwamitra, when he saw this woman, he got so attached to her, and he then he they got a relationship, and he the Menaka had a daughter from Vishwamitra, and she had a daughter. The daughter was called Shakuntala. Mm -hmm. 
ปรากฏว่าวิชามิตรามุนีเนี่ยก็รู้สึกหลงไหลในความงามของเธอมากและสุดท้ายทางคู่ก็ได้กันหลังจากนั้นเนี่ยทางคู่ก็ทําให้ก็มีบุตรธิดาบุตรสาวคนหนึ่งขึ้นมาบุตรสาวคนนี้ชื่อว่าสุกุลตะละ But we see that pure devotee Haridas Thakur, he didn't get disturbed. He was he he was always chanting the holy name of Krishna. And even beautiful women came to him, and they tried to seduce him, but he he didn't get disturbed. He remained chanting. So Lord Krishna told Muchi Kunda, he said, "I'm going to give you a special benediction." I'm going to give you the benediction that you will always think of me. And you'll be able to travel in this material world without being contaminated by the material energy. So, this shows that if a person is in Krishna consciousness, or if he's engaged in serving Krishna under the direction of the Guru, then he will never be contaminated by the material energy. ตรงนี้เนี่ยแสดงให้เห็นว่าถ้าเกิดว่าบุคคลเนี่ยมีความจริงใจในการปฏิบัติการรับใช้คริสต์นาภายใต้คําสั่งของพระอาจารย์ทิพย์บุคคลผู้นั้นเนี่ยจะไม่ได้อยู่ภายใต้มนทินของคุณสมบัติทางวัตถุ Lord Krishna says to Muchi Kunda he said because you are a Shatriya so you have committed you you've done a lot of killing of animals Sometimes you went hunting and you killed animals in that way. And sometimes. Because of some politics, you were involved in some politics. There was also killing of animals. So you have to get purified from this. And you can get purified by just doing bhakti yoga. And bhakti yoga means you always keep your mind fixed on me. And very soon you will get freed from all the reactions. So we can understand that Shatrias sometimes they kill animals in hunting. But they don't. They they still have to suffer the reactions for the sin. So it doesn't matter if you are a Shatriya or a Vaishya or a Brahmana. Everyone is in, everyone is recommended to take sannyas at the end of life. เพราะฉะนั้นไม่ว่าคุณเนี่ยจะเป็น
คนในชนชั้นไหนไม่ว่าจะเป็นกเกษตรยาวัยชาหรือว่าบรามณะทุกชนชั้นเนี่ยในสุดท้ายของชีวิตเนี่ยจะแนะนําให้เราเนี่ยรับเอาชีวิตสัญญาสีหรือว่าชีวิตสละโลก and, and they should take up the service of Lord Krishna But in this way, they get freed from all the sinful reactions of the past life. So then, Lord Krishna told Muchikunda, "In your next life, you will take birth in a first-class Vaishnava family." และกิชนาก็บอกกับกษัตริย์มุชิกุลดาว่าข้าให้ความมั่นใจแด่ท่านว่าในชาติหน้าเนี่ยท่านจะได้เกิดมาในมาเป็นวิชนาวะชั้นหนึ่งที่ดีที่สุดในมุมปรามณะ And that life, your only business will be to engage in my devotional service. และในชาตินั้นของท่านเนี่ยภารกิจเดียวของท่านก็คือการปฏิบัติตนในการรับใช้ทิพย์ต่อข้า Vaishnava means first-class Brahmana. Vaishnava means to Brahmana, chapter one. And one who has not got the qualification of a, a a Brahmana cannot come to the platform of a Vaishnava. และสำหรับผู้ที่ยังไม่มีคุณสมบัติของพราหมณ์เนี่ยก็ยังไม่มาก็ยังไม่สามารถมาอยู่ในระดับของวิชนาวะได้ Right. So, you want to become a Vaishnava first. You have to become a Brahmana. To be, become a Brahmana, you have to strictly follow four regulative principles. If you can't follow the four principles, then you can't be a Brahmana. And if you can't be a Brahmana, then you cannot become a, a Vaishnava. So when you become a Vaishnava, then you have to engage in all kinds of welfare activities for all the living entities. และเมื่อเราเป็นวิชนาวะแล้วเนี่ยเราก็ต้องทำกิจกรรมเพื่อความสุขของมวลชีวิต And the highest of all the activities for the benefit of all the living entities is to preach Krishna consciousness. แล้วก็กิจกรรมการกุศลที่ดีที่สุดสำหรับสิ่งมีชีวิตเนี่ยก็คือการสอนเกี่ยวกับคริสนาที่สำเนาให้พวกเขา So it's stated by Krishna. That uh, anybody who's favored by Krishna, he can become absolutely Krishna conscious. And they'll be they'll be given the job to preach the Vaishnava philosophy. So that's the end of the deliverance of Muchi Kunda, and we'll go on to chapter fifty-two, Krishna, the Ranchor. So, so when Muchi Kunda uh, heard all these words from Lord Krishna, then he circumambulated Lord Krishna in the cave. He circumambulated Lord Krishna, and then he came out of the cave. Then, after that, 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 after
ชวงศ์ที่มาจากราชวงศ์อันสูงส่งก็คือชื่อราชวงศ์ว่าอิชวาคุ Right, it's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita about King Ishvaku. Right, Imam Vivishwate Yogam Proktavam Ahamaviyam Vivishwan Manave Prahur Manor Ishvakave Pravit. Lord Krishna said, "I instructed this imperishable science of yoga to the sun god." And the sun god instructed it to Manu, the father of mankind, and Manu gave it to his son Ishvaku. So Muchikunda was a descendant from King Ishvaku. So he was born in a very good family, devoted family. So he circumambulated Lord Krishna out of respect for him, and then he came out of the cave. And when he came out of the cave, he saw that all the humans had become much smaller than before. Yeah, they, they were they were like the size of pygmies from compared to before. They become so small. And the trees had also become very small. So when Muji Kunda saw that, then he understood. Oh, that it must be Kali Yuga now. So when he understood that it was Kali Yuga, then he travelled. He went to the north. He moved in the direction of the north. And he travelled to the north. He came to a mountain. Famous mountain called Ganga Madana Mountain. And on that mountain, there were many trees, and there was even sandalwood trees. And there were trees with beautiful flowers, which gave off beautiful flowers. And these trees had a beautiful. The flowers on these trees were very fragrant, and just you just smell the flowers, you feel so good. So Mochi Kunda decided he would stay there in that mountain, Ganga Madana mountain, and he would stay there and do austerities and penances for the rest of his life. So this place, Ganga Madana mountain, this is actually in the very northern part of the Himalaya mountains. And this is where Nara and Narayan rishis live. This is where their place is, like Badarik Ashram. Right, this 
So Badarik Ashram is a very popular, people still go there in the Himalayas, they go to visit that place. But you can only go a couple of months a year because the rest of the year it's always snow and ice. So Muchi Kunda went to Badarik Ashram and he engaged himself in the worship of Lord Krishna. And he tolerated all the pain and all the pleasure, all the troubles, all the dualities of the material world. Of course, it would be very cold there. It's snow and ice. It's only like two months of the year when the road is open. So Muchi Kunda went there and Lord Krishna, he came back to Mathura. He came back to Mathura because the army of Kalayavna was still there. So Lord Krishna fought with the army of Kalayavna and he killed them all one after another. Um, after he killed them all, then they collected all the jo all the bo all the booty, all the jewelry, and all the wealth from the dead bodies. They collected it all, then they brought it all to Dwarka. So while Lord Krishna was doing this, then Jarasandha came again. He also attacked Mathura and he had a big army this time, big 23 Akshahinis. So Jarasandha had already attacked Mathura 17 times and Krishna had defeated him every time. So this was the 18th time Jarasandha is coming to attack Mathura. So Lord Krishna didn't want to see so much killing of all the soldiers. And Lord Krishna had some other things to do. There was some other important work which he was supposed to do. So Krishna didn't stay on the battlefield. He left the battlefield. He didn't fight. He wasn't afraid, but he just pretended like he was an ordinary human being. He pretended that he was afraid. And because this was a huge army, Jarasandha, he never came with such a big army before. So Lord Krishna just pretended he was afraid. Oh, what a big army. Oh, I'm afraid. And he just pretended it was just a drama. 
แล้วก็หลังจากนั้นเนี่ยก็หลังจากที่มามามีจะสันดาวกองทัพมาแย่มากฉันก็ทำเป็นกลัวบอกโอ้โหกองทัพแย่มากเลยน่ากลัวจังเลยไปดีกว่า So Lord Krishna he left the battlefield that's how he got the name Rancho Rancho means one who leaves the battlefield Rancho แล้วก็หลังจากนั้นเนี่ย Krishna เนี่ยทรงได้พระนามว่า Rancho นั่นแปลว่าผู้ที่หนีไปจากสนามรบ So Although Lord Krishna's lotus feet are very soft, he left on foot, and he didn't carry any weapons with him. And he he went for a very long distance, walking on foot. On foot. แล้วก็ถึงแม้ว่าพระบาทรูปดอกบัวของพระเจ้าเนี่ยจะทรงมีความนุ่มนวลอ่อนนุ่มนวลละมุนละมายมากเหมือนดอกจิตดอกบัวเนี่ยแต่พระองค์ก็ทรงเดินด้วยเท้าเปล่าเป็นระยะทางที่ไกล So Jarath Jarasandha thought Krishna and Balaram are afraid because I've got such a big army so they're running away from me แล้วก็ Jarasandha เนี่ยก็คิดว่า Krishna กับ Balaram เนี่ยกลัวข้าแหละเพราะข้าเนี่ยเอาเอากองทัพมาเยอะมาก So Jarasandha followed them he came with all his chariots and horses and soldiers And they came after Krishna and Balaram. So Jarasandha is thinking Krishna and Balaram are just ordinary humans. But Krishna is just having the is showing this pastime. He is being r a n c h u r Which means he left the battlefield. Now, a s h a t r i a is never supposed to leave the battlefield. But Krishna left the battlefield. So this is Lord Krishna's pastime. It's a very famous pastime. And there's even temples of Krishna where Krishna is called Ranchur, Ranchur Krishna. And、there's a famous temple in Gujarat. It's called r a n c h o r j i Temple. And p r a b h u p a d says there's many, many temples of r a n c h o r j i Now, if, usually, if a king leaves the battlefield without fighting. It, it's not good. It means he's a coward. But when Krishna leaves the battlefield without fighting, the devotees worship him. So this is the difference between the demon and the devotee. The demon always wants to measure Krishna's opulence. But a devotee always surrenders unto Krishna and worships him. So, if we f o u g h t we should f o u g h t We have to follow in the footsteps of the pure devotees. And then we will know that Krishna left the battlefield. Not be, when Krishna left the battlefield, he was not afraid. 
ดแล้วเราจะสามารถรู้ได้ว่าการจากสนามรบไปของพระชนะเนี่ยไม่ใช่ด้วยความกลัวของพระองค์ He had another thing to do. He had some other purpose, to do, other business to do. And what he had to do is going to be told in a, in a little while. We'll hear what he, Krishna had to do. He had to he had to receive a letter from Rukmini, who was going to be his future wife. Rukmini is Krishna's first wife. <coughs> so Krishna leaves the battlefield. It's one of his opulences. Krishna is the most renounced. He has all wealth, all beauty, all fame. All knowledge, all strength, and he's the most renounced. So Krishna could have fought with Jarasandha. He had a big enough army, but he didn't want to do it. Krishna could have defeated the whole army himself if he had wanted. He'd already defeated Jarasandha seventeen times. So Krishna leaving the battlefield. Is, is an example of Krishna's renunciation. So we'll hear about that in the next class. Okay, so we'll stop here today. We'll ask if there are any questions. Okay, we got two devotees here. Who is this? Dr. Ryan. Here's a question, Dr. Ryan. Hi. Yes. Okay. Hare Krishna, my basic um, is. I would like to know what would be some symptoms of premature renunciation. Maturity. with material desire. Because I believe the process of Krishna consciousness, natural quality, develops natural naturally through the right good service. But what 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 would be some symptoms of somebody who's maybe for the wrong reasons, for vain reasons? What would be the that? Well, it could be like somebody wants to, uh, they maybe want to renounce the world and become even a sannyasi, but they have not properly 
controlled their mind and senses, they're not properly ready, and they haven't, and they haven't really understood the commitment which is required to enter into the sannyas. So they may give up the world for some time, and after some time then they come back. They may say, no, I don't want to be a sannyasi anymore, I want to give it up. So that's not good. That's a disturbance to the social order. If one becomes renounced and then another, uh, then later on you want to come back into material life, that's not good. Because the, the renunciation, if one is actually renounced, then he will remain renounced. He won't come back to enjoy the material world. So that's, and then we see also Mayavadis do like that, that the Mayavadis will renounce the world and they say life is meaningless, there's no purpose to the world and they give up, they go away from the world, they go to the mountains or they may live in the cave, but then after some time then they come back and they come back and they open a school or they open a hospital and they take up some welfare activities. So that's premature renunciation, that they come, they give up the world and then they come back again and take up some work in the world. You understand? Uh, yeah, I, I see that very much. Um, I've also, I've heard that from some people that Remember, we, we, we actually in capable of renunciation because we don't factually possess everything as, as property and that every um, act of Krishna pastime that Krishna plays is an act of renunciation. Are you able to speak on that? I'm sorry, Prabhu, your voice is breaking. It's not so clear to me what you're saying. Did you get it all, Archana? No, no, Guru Maharaj, your voice then, and also I think the fan next to you, it's, uh, that's the disturbance, and yeah, your voice is cracking. Can you, can you hear me now? Hare Krishna. Can you hear me? Well, you have to speak, and then we'll hear you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I've heard that, that we, 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 don't, we, we can't factually pos, uh, renounce anything because we don't possess anything. It's all Krishna's property. So can you speak on, on how Krishna, the, the quality of Krishna's renunciation compared to ours? Oh, okay. Well, Krishna is described as Brahmachari. That he was grandfather Bhishma was supposed he's a brahmachari took a vow of brahmachari but Bhishma said I'm not the best brahmachari he said Krishna is the greatest brahmachari he said Krishna could be with so many women and he was not disturbed by them so he said that is actually that was actually renunciation Krishna could be with so many light the beauty, most beautiful ladies in the universe for Rasa Leela and he would go away and leave them. He would tease them. He would go away and leave them and they would be broken hearted and they would be looking for Krishna. Where did he go? So that was an example of Krishna's renunciation. And then we see also Krishna departing from the world. How Krishna left the world? He left everything. He left all of his queens and his family and everything, and he departed from the from the world. So he's not attached. He, he because everything is his, so he doesn't have to earn, doesn't have to worry about anything because it's all his. So he's he doesn't have to worry about getting anything. And you know, people, nobody can take from him. It's all his eternally. Everything belongs to him, so it's all his. 
So he doesn't have to think about losing it or getting more. He doesn't have to worry about these things. So he's supremely renounced in the sense that he doesn't get attached. We get attached. To, we get something. We get something, we want more. Or we didn't get enough, we want more. And we're always trying to get things. And if we lose it, we become very disturbed. But Krishna doesn't have to worry about anything, having anything or losing anything. It doesn't make any difference to Krishna. So he's supremely renounced. That's so beautiful, Maharaj. Thank you so much. All glories. Okay, Hare Krishna. Archana? Archana? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Are you going to translate? Yes, yes, yes. Vajan Prodi Naha Tham Kham Tham Wa การเสียสละที่ผิดเนี่ยหรือว่าการสละที่ผิดเนี่ยมันเป็นในลักษณะอย่างไรอ่าคุณมาเราบอกว่าการเสียสละที่ผิดเนี่ยบางบางทีบาง
impersonalism and that will bring you pious activities which may get you qualified for impersonal liberation. But if you want to get the mercy of the pure devotees, we have to do pious activities in relation to devotees, in relation to Krishna and Krishna's devotees. That, that may qualify you for Krishna's mercy. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I've understood now. Thank you. ความทางของมาจีนะคะบอกว่าเราเนี่ยจะได้อัญญาณสุขเกียรติใดยังไงอ่าพระเมตตาของพระเจ้าเนี่ยเราจะได้มาจากการที่เราเนี่ยปฏิบัติตนเป็นคนดีหรือว่าเพื่อให้เราเนี่ยได้พบเจอกับสาวกที่ดีแล้วก็เราจะค่อยๆพัฒนาตัวเราเองได้แล้วก็เป็นสาวกที่ดีของพระองค์ได้ <coughs> About if we meet some kind of devotee as action like they need um, the others to serve them and try to judge the others as offense them um, and sometimes try to interrupt about um, seva of the other devotee like they are stay at the first level of Anishta Adhikari level. Uh, so my question is, uh, did they will get any offense or how we should dealing with um, that devotee? How do we deal with that devotee? That, that he's, he's getting service, he's taking service from another devotee. Um, he expects he expect as the others should serve them. He expects others to serve him. Yes. Well, you have to understand some devotees are senior and some devotees are junior. So generally, you know, the older devotees, they get some service from the younger devotees. You see, those who are older and more senior, then maybe they're busy or they're doing a lot of different services maybe so they get some help they get some service from the new new people or the younger people so it's not wrong if somebody's getting service from that you know it's giving mercy to the people who are serving if somebody is serving the older devotee it said by serving the devotees then bhagavad gita is it no, not Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, it said, by serving the devotees, then it opens the doors to liberation. It's actually good to serve the devotees. And, but usually a, a lot of devotees, they won't let you serve them. They don't like to take service from others. But actually you, you're very lucky if you get the opportunity to serve a devotee. Just, just like, just like Prabhupada was here, wouldn't you like to serve Prabhupada? Wouldn't you like to serve Prabhupada? Yeah, of course you would. Yeah. Yeah, you would like to serve Prabhupada. So, then Prabhupada's not here, but other people are here. People who serve Prabhupada, you can serve them. You can serve people who serve Prabhupada. And that way, you get the mercy. You get mercy. 
So we should be humble. We should want to be the servant. But at the same time, we don't like to take service. We like to give service. We, we like to be the servant. We don't like to be served. We cannot be the master, but we can be the servant. So even you serve a devotee, the devotee will accept the service to give to Krishna. Do you understand? Yes, Guru Maharaj. But about about this situation, I mean, um, about senior, uh, it's normally about about me. Um, I love to serve all of the devotee, even um, junior or senior devotee. But um, I met someone to um, like he he expect like like he need to serve me. Then expect that. I should have be as he serves something like that. But normally, I I associate about about good many for the others always. But um, I I didn't actually like, like happy because I I feel it's normal to 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 be highly to them. But they uh, blame me like I offend them. So. Um, he tried to like like this interrupt about about some my seva, so I don't understand about that, Guru Maharaj. Well, I don't know what uh, what you were doing. What was your seva? Um, like like um, today um, I should go to the post office to distribute um the Krishna book that uh some uh. Thai people uh, order, but uh, he need me to discuss something, something like that. Um, but I said I I should I should do my my work something like that, Umaras. So I don't understand about that. He said like I should serve him. Well, mm. yeah, you can serve him. Yes. If you can serve them, no harm. They'll be pleased. But about about um, this, I planning to to say what the others. Uh, I mean the others work, but how about that, Guru Maharaj? Well, you have to work everything out. You have to satisfy everyone. You have other work to do. Okay, so you do it. And you tell the man, I'll come back and see you another time. Aww. So you just tell him, I'll come. I, yeah, I don't have time today, but I'll come tomorrow and see you tomorrow or something. Um, I told, I told him, but but he he said like I offense him. I I don't need to offense, but I have. The others were to do Kurmaras. Then I I inform him directly. Okay. Uh, but I I think I I, I didn't did some offense Kurmaras. Mm -hmm. I hope not. <laughs> okay. But about about so I I I I don't feel comfortable like he need. Like he he need me to serve him before like the others work of my seva because I need I need uh I mean about distribute books is serve Krishna so I should serve Krishna before the devotee Guru Maharaj can you explain about that? No, you can serve the devotee first. Okay. Now if somebody demanding, they want you to serve them, then okay. Your service to Krishna can wait. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Krishna is pleased when you see him. Krishna is pleased when you serve his devotees. Krishna wants to see his devotees happy. Okay, Guru Maharaj. If you please Krishna's devotees, then Krishna's happy. 
And if Krishna's devotees are not happy, then Krishna's not happy. Uh, so it's good to please the devotees. Okay, Guru Maharaj, I will manage about that. Thank you for your suggestion. Thank okay. you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Any other questions, Arjuna? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, oh. for question women. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Prabhupada. Uh, by the mercy of Gargamuni, Guru Maharaj, uh, uh, Muchutanda got the mercy of Krishna and uh, he is a pure devotee. I was wondering that uh, even though he is a pure devotee, he had the sin of killing the animals and he has to take one more birth to uh, purify it and to do more devotional service. Is it like uh, he didn't have enough time to do devotional service in this birth, Guru Maharaj? Yes, well, he was fighting for the demigods, you see. He had been fighting for the demigods in the heavenly planets. He had gone to the higher planets and he was fighting for the demigods. And he got so tired that he got the benediction from the demigods that he could sleep as long as he wanted. And, 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 and if somebody woke them up, then he would burn them to ashes from his eyes. So, it said Mochi Kunda had been fighting for a very long time. He had been fighting for the demigods against the demons for a very long time. And so, yeah, there was no time to do devotional service. He would spent so long, many thousands, thousands of years, fighting for the demigods against the demons in the higher planets. He spent a very long time there. So, he came back to this planet to, to rest. And then he met Lord Krishna, and then, okay, then he's going off to do some austerities, but still he has to take birth again, because he has to do devotional service. He has to be born in a pure Vaishnava family, and use his whole life in the service of Krishna. Krishna wants him to have that opportunity. wondering like uh, we also want to do devotional service in this life but uh, we have uh, sometimes so many disturbances and uh, uh, sometimes unnecessary sense gratification to satisfy the family or something like that uh, it will be a great loss of time right good maharaj able to finish in the time yes of course, there's always these problems in family life. That's why you have to organize your life. You have to renounce, you know, that at a certain point, you have to retire from all that. And you, you know, the, the Vedic system is that from the age of 50 or about 50, you should enter to Vanaprastha, which is retired or renounced life. And you prepare for the next life. So half of the life, should be dedicated for preparing for the next life. So first half of the life you spend, you know, you have your material pleasures and enjoyment, and then you should renounce. Panchasodvam vanam prajit. From the age of 50, we're meant to retire from all that and prepare for the next life. Because we're getting old and it takes time to detach yourself from all the sense gratification pleasures which you've been having in family life and you have to prepare for the next life and so that's why people would retire and take vanaprastha and dedicate themselves fully to spiritual practice 
but it's is it it's not for the mass ladies guru maharaj like uh, Well, oh yeah, ladies also. Ladies would meant well. Of course, ladies usually they would follow their husband. Their husband would, you know, renounce, and then the wife would go with their husband, and they would renounce the hus wife. Husband, the wife, the husband or the king would go into the forest to do austerities, and the queens would go with him. We see Dhritarashtra went, and Gandhari followed him. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Um, yeah, I was thinking for uh, the for the uh, for my case, like where the husband also not devotee. Yeah, it's not devotee, but still, you have you have to devote yourself, and you have to devote you, and you have to retire from all that all the pleasures of family life by the age of fifty. You should also plan to detach yourself. <laughs> You can still live with the home. You can still live in the home. You can still live with the husband, but you know you're getting older. By the age of fifty, you don't want to continue trying. You don't want. Yes, Guru Maharaj. You don't want to continue a life of sense gratification throughout the life up until the time of death. You have you have to renounce. You have to detach yourself from all that. Can somebody turn off their mic? If you've got a lot of noise in the background, can you turn off it's, your microphone? It's Vaishnavi Mataji only. Really? I I I mute her a little. I mute her. Okay. Yeah, I think she's at the temple and the program going on. Where are you, Vaishnavi? She's in. Oh, Mataji, you can speak. Yes. Ah, uh, Guru Maharaj, I just came came to Iskon uh, Chennai Temple. Oh, you're in Chennai. On the way, yeah, I'm going from my mother-in-law's house to my mother's house, and I, I thought of visiting the temple, and I, uh, I thought I will also attend the class from here. I'm at the back of the temple sitting. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Anyway, you got the point, yeah. Ah uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, I got the point. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Okay. All right, so we will stop here today. Thank you, Archana, for your translation. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank, thank all the Lord. devotees for the questions and Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada ki. Shri Prabhupada ki. Shri Prabhupada ki.